video, we're going to cover the assembly of an HPD-90 and the components that go into it. All right, so first we'll start by prepping the uh, diffuser and the end cap so we can get this assembly taken care of. We have some pins that get installed to hold the diffuser in place so it doesn't rotate uh, when the unit is in operation. Next, we're going to put in the wear ring for the pump shroud uh, on the impeller. There's an anti-roll pin on the wear ring and an anti-roll pin in the end cap. Those two pieces go together to prevent this from rotating during operation. Next, we have two retention rings that hold this in place. and then the installation of our diffuser. The next step will be the installation of our thrust bearing, and that's gonna go inside the casing all the way in the back on the turbine side. To install this, we use what we call our rotor removal tool so that we can push down on the bearing without having to force any sharp edges on the wear surface for the rotor. We do want to exercise caution when installing that because it is graphite at can chip if you force it in too hard or on too much of an angle. Uh, if it's in straight, it should just slide in once the O-rings are compressed. The next step will be the installation of the rotor. The side that's flat without a shroud is the turbine side. The side with the shroud is the pump side. The turbine side will go down, the pump side will face up. The center bearing has a recessed roof on it as well for the retaining rings. Sometimes you have to use a little bit extra force to compress the O-rings, but once they're compressed, the unit will slide in uh, relatively easily. Then you're going to need your rotor removal tool to push down the center bearing as the rotor will bottom out on the thrust bearing first, but the center bearing still has to go further down into the cavity of the, uh, of the casing. Once it's in all the way, it should sit flush 
with the with the groove on the casing where these retaining rings will sit. Next step is to install the end cap with the diffuser. Typically we stamp the serial number on the top of the end cap and we like to have that be at the zero degree or 12 o'clock position. Lastly, we'll install the aux valve, which just allows you to uh, allow more, allow turbine flow in or concentrate flow into the turbine side from a secondary nozzle. So, as you can see, assembly is quick and easy. Uh, to disassemble the unit, you just do the reverse order. Um, you don't have to remove the aux valve when, when disassembling, unless you want to completely hose out and clean the internal casing, then it would be recommended to take the aux valve out. But for just simple basic maintenance, uh, repairing a thrust bearing or uh, a new center bearing, uh, you can leave the aux valve in, just remove the end cap, pull the rotor out, and swap the bearings out as needed.